Chris Lee and Blaine Gilmer of Southeastern 14 here. We are previewing the Sugar Bowl between Alabama and Kansas State. We were doing this on December 14th. The game is December 31st. We clarify that because there could be some opt-outs and things like that between now and then. But we will preview the game with what we have. It's a disappointing year for Alabama when it does not get in the college football playoff. And I think this year was a good year by Kansas State standards pretty much any year. This should be a pretty entertaining ball game, Blaine. I mean, the Big 12 champions, and and listen, here's the thing. The Big 12 was a lot better league than people give it credit mm-hmm. for this year, Chris, because there wasn't, uh, you know, TCU, of course, is in college football playoff, but I don't, in my own mind, I wouldn't necessarily call TCU an elite football team. I think there's some gaps, and I think that they, when we do, uh, I don't know that since we're a SEC channel, we probably won't do a, a, a TCU Michigan uh, preview. We may sneak one in there just to, just to appease everybody, you know, <laughs> excuse me, appease everybody out there. But I wouldn't call them necessarily an elite team, but there was a lot of really good teams, I would say, in the Big 12. And to come out the, the winner of that league, I think Kansas State uh, has shown that they've, they've, they're have a really good football team. Yeah, I don't think the Big 12 at the very, very top three or four teams was as good as the SEC, but top to bottom, the Big 12 was a really quality league. I don't think there was a a pass out any given week, and I think when you play a schedule like that, that prepares you to play in this type of game. Of course, Alabama played a challenging schedule in its own right. Blaine, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the game, I, I think it's important to understand who is maybe playing and who is maybe not playing Alabama's receiving core and offensive line took a pretty good hit. Um, yeah. Kansas State, I, th- I think, is probably going to be closer to full speed, although Adrian Martinez, I guess, uh, we don't know how that's going to go. What have you got on injuries and opt outs and things like that for this one? Well, the last that we heard from Nick Saban. He said he was still unsure whether uh, Bryce Young and Will Anderson would play in this game. I, If I was a betting man, I would say that they do not because literally you're talking about, in my opinion, Chris, and, and you know opinions of NFL scouts, two guys that are likely to go in the top five overall picks. I mean, uh, that, that are that are really, you know, have a lot of money on the line out there, so uh, risk and injury. Yeah. And I know people, it's it's terrible to say now that an event it, with the prestige and the history of the Sugar Bowl is a quote-unquote meaningless game. But in terms of their futures going forward, it you know, it basically is to, to, to those two guys. Uh, so now those two also have a lot of pride in the – in Alabama, mm-hmm. they and and they love that university. So I, you know, if they did play, uh, it wouldn't shock me. But I would say I would lean towards them them not playing. And then, of course, you mentioned it: the mass exodus that Alabama has had in the transfer portal, not necessarily at the very top uh, of their receiving core with with uh, you know Brooks and 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 uh, and Jermaine Burton. You know, Jacory Brooks and Jermaine Burton are going to be there in the bowl game, but. Guys, you know, down the pecking order a little bit there, Treshawn Holden, JoJo Earl, uh, Christian Leary, a bunch of guys yeah. are all a lot in the of portal. Depth. Yeah, Javion, Javion Cohen in the portal, a starting guard for them, a, a, mm-hmm. a reserve tackle, Tommy Brockermeyer, who's a, uh, you know, a very highly coveted recruit in the portal. Um, so at some point, Chris, you know, when you get 15, 16, 17 guys uh, in the in the transfer portal, it might become a little difficult to, to practice the way you want to practice. Yeah, and we will hit some scenarios of what if this and what if that as we go through briefly. Let's start our preview with when Alabama's got the ball. The Crimson Tide averaged 40.8 points a game. Kansas State gave up 20.1. Alabama threw eight picks. Kansas State registered 18. Alabama fumbled eight times, rather lost eight fumbles, which is as many as K-State recovered. We're going to talk rushing plays and passing plays, and a sack does not count as a rushing play. We take that off the passing plays. Alabama ran the ball 32 times a game on average or attempted 32 rushing plays and 38 passing plays. And 
averaged 6.6 per rushing play, 6.9 per passing play, while Kansas State gave up 5.0 per rushing play and 5.6 per passing play. Look, this game could go a lot of ways. I mean, if Bryce Young plays, you would expect Alabama to air it out a lot. But we saw sometimes when he didn't play. I remember the Arkansas game where Jalen Milrow had a phenomenal game running the ball. And Alabama showed the ability, I think, lost in the fact that Alabama's season didn't quite hit the standard that Nick Saban holds his team to and that Alabama fans expect. Alabama ran the ball really really, really well There's this year with Jameer Gibbs, uh, with with Young at times, with Milrow when he played. Uh, of course, if you as you've noted, Alabama down an offensive lineman or two. But I think philosophy could obviously easy, easily be dictated by who plays quarterback. And I guess the good news for Alabama is if it's Jalen Milrow instead of Bryce Young, then – you could argue – I would not argue that Alabama's better in that scenario, but I would say no, no, Alabama no. might be a little more equipped to hit Kansas State where it's relatively weaker because 5.6 yards per pass attempt and 16 picks, that's really, really good. That's elite. Yeah, the the, the passing defense for Kansas State has been, has been good, like you said. Now, I do think, um, despite Max Duggan being a, a Heisman Trophy finalist, I'm not so sure that the quarterback – play in the in the Big 12 outside of Will Howard was excellent this year. I'm not so sure Spencer Saunders was as good as he has been. Baylor's, you know, quarterbacks weren't quite as good as they have been. Texas Tech's, you know, uh, struggled a little bit, mm-hmm. so that may have something to do with it. But having said that, you're right that that where you've been able to hit uh Kansas State a little bit is in that running game. Heck, we saw it in the uh Big Big 12 Championship game, Mac, Max Duggan running down the field on him uh, at will basically in that last drive, but so if they if Max Duggan can do that, you know that Jalen Milrow is going to be able to to hurt Kansas State's defense with his legs. Um and I do expect it to be uh, Jalen Milrow even though like we said as of recording it, nothing official has come out, but it looks like uh, all reports are saying that Jameer Gibbs and Jace McClellan are both looking at coming back for Alabama next year at the running back spot. So, uh, and who knows? We may even see Ty Simpson in this ball game for Alabama if Bryce Young mm-hmm. decides not to play. Who's a very, very talented, highly coveted uh, quarterback recruit. So, <clears throat> it could be a two quarterback type system thing like that. But I really. Really think, um, and by the way, Ty Simpson can run the ball himself as well. He was he was pretty athletic in in high school. But uh, when it comes down to it, I think you're going to see a lot of Jameer Gibbs here, uh, especially with, you know, Chris. I mean, we talked about it. Some of that key depth at receiver is going to be gone. Your rotation is going to be down. You're probably not going to want to be running a lot of deep vertical routes and having to having to sub guys in and out. Yeah. So I think you're going to see Alabama. Uh, try to run the football, and also you'll be shuffling around that offensive line with Javion Cohen uh, being out. So, what's mm-hmm. the easiest thing for an offensive coordinator to do to to ease his offensive line into the game? Have them going forward and teeing off and hitting guys in the mouth. So, I think that's going to be the plan that you see Alabama uh, out of Alabama in New Orleans against Kansas State. Okay, before we talk about the other side of the matchups. A quick shout to our sponsor, Stakes. Predict sports better than the crowd for a chance to win NFTs with Stakes. Players can submit their sports predictions against friends, other fans, and influencers forever. Don't let your sports genius go overlooked. Join Stakes and have the best prediction captured in the moment. Go to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14. Use our invite code southeastern14 and get a double welcome bonus. When Kansas State has the ball, Blaine, the Wildcats average 33.2 points a game. Alabama gives up 18 flat. K-State has lost six fumbles. Alabama recovered seven. K-State has four interceptions that it's thrown. Alabama has picked off five. Alabama's registered 36 sacks. K-State has given up 19 Yards per rush play, Alabama giving up 4.4, only 4.6 per pass play, which is incredible. I mean, you you almost never see a stat like that. I know Alabama's defense, in the eyes of a lot of people, was not vintage Alabama defense, but that pass stat loud, or excuse me, that passing stat in particular, Blaine, really loud. 
Yeah, and and that you saw that come through with the the substitution of Eli Ricks late in the year. Nobody knows. I guess the practice habits or whatever weren't up to par for Nick Saban uh, to his standard early on in the year. But one of the better corners uh, in college football that everybody thought was going to be a factor the whole year for Alabama, but he ends up playing later in the year and contributes to the secondary doing well after they had that one blemish, you know, so to speak, against um, against Tennessee where they really lit him up passing as well. But, you know, when it comes down to it, uh, Chris, these type of games that we've seen in the past, they come down to big plays. And I say these types of games, I mean games where Alabama's out of national title contention and they play a team in a bowl game that it seems like that bowl game's a bigger game for them, right? A la yeah. Utah, Utah in the Sugar Bowl, uh, you know, a few years back. And I could see this this Kansas State team in terms of offensively having Will Howard, who's going to be coming back for them and has got a lot to prove against a, a you know an Alabama team. Deuce Vaughn, who has said he's absolutely going to take this opportunity to play one last time with his Kansas State. Uh, brothers over there so then they're going to have a lot of a lot of juice a lot of momentum uh coming into this in alabama especially if they don't have will anderson is going to have to stop the run first you have to stop deuce vaughn first and that that yeah. number that you threw out there over four yards uh, a carry on, on on running plays that's not necessarily that is what I think Alabama should be more worried about. That's not necessarily up to Nick Saban's standard. You typically that 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 number's down in the in the mid to low threes uh, for a Nick Saban defense. So I think uh, as long as they don't get gashed at times by Deuce Vaughn, who can get lost. I mean, Chris, we're yeah. talking about Deuce Vaughn is five foot five, five foot six. There's no exaggeration on that. That is not hyperbole. He is a, he, they call him mighty mouse for a reason. The, the young man is, is tiny, but man, he, he's powerful and he's, and he's fast. He, they said he squatted, 500 pounds like five times or something at 170 pounds is ridiculous his strength index so uh it's going to be interesting to see how they attack him and listen will howard is a guy who came on to the scene for kansas state after adrian martinez got injured and he's averaging 10 yards per attempt through the air when he's in there uh chris that is when you're in the double digits on yards per attempt, you're you're really pushing the ball down the field. So big plays, I think, is the key here. Can Alabama limit them early and and keep uh, Kansas State from getting the getting the momentum down there in New Orleans? Because we all know uh, what that looks like when an uh, Alabama crowd kind of gets their uh, sits on their hands yeah. because the the Sugar Bowl is not going how they how they want it to go. A big challenge for Nick Saban and this crew to test the maturity of this team and also that defensive front uh, who at times has has been run on a little bit, especially if Will Anderson is not there with them. I think Kansas State should be short running back you. <laughs> that Vaughn, that had Darren Sproles. I'm, I'm looking just as a sidebar. I don't know why Vaughn didn't get invited to the Heisman ceremony. I mean, he had over 1,800 yards from scrimmage in a year where – it wasn't just a stellar list of candidates. Uh, anyway, there, no, there's I mean, my he, sidebar. He's a, he's a fantastic player for sure. Yeah, um, he lit he lit Missouri up. That's our familiarity with him with the SEC. He ran 24 times for 145 yards, two touchdowns, added a catch for four yards. I'm just looking at his game log. He just was so consistent week in and week out. Uh, other than the Iowa State game where he struggled, uh, did did not really have a bad game but anyway yeah i mean th th this will be fun to watch i mean alabama though even without will anderson this is still a team that can make some plays i'm, I'm very intrigued with this side of the matchup no matter whether anderson plays or whether he does not yeah no i yeah i, I agree i think uh a lot of people would argue um would argue that this kansas state team is just peaking at the right time and we, especially like I said with Will Howard uh coming on at quarterback form a lot of people were saying whether Martinez is injured or not that they should make that switch and if you can't they need to get that pass rush like you said the 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 sack numbers weren't as high as you would thought Alabama's would have been they need to get that pass rush on Will Howard to prevent him from taking those shots uh, down the field and of course they're going to use uh Deuce Vaughn in the passing game as well Okay, before we get to some miscellaneous stats and make predictions 
a quick shout out to our other sponsor, Bro Throw. If you don't like betting $11 to win $10, then this place is for you. Bro Throw lets you bet in all 50 states. It's not the house, so bettors have a fair chance of winning. It is the only sports betting platform that doesn't take a cut of every bet. You don't have to deposit money into a Bro Throw account. No deposits, no minimum bets, no need to connect your bank account. Betters pay each other directly, and there's a hassle-free sign-up process that gets you in the action in seconds. Go to brothrow.com forward slash SE14. We are starting a group. Go ahead and get in that. We will get some bets going on that pretty soon. But anyway, help out those who help us and help yourself. You can win some money without having to pay the house, and I think we all like to do that when we can. Okay, Blaine, a few miscellaneous stats before we get into predictions and such. Alabama was penalized 71 yards a game. That is very atypical Alabama. Kansas State, a very disciplined team, 41 yards of penalties a game. FEI special teams rankings, Kansas State 19, Alabama 5. Strength of schedule according to ESPN's FPI, Alabama 9, Kansas State 17. And the ranking in our Southeastern 14 computer composite, that's four computers we really like, Alabama 4, K-State 9. We've got a line on this of Alabama favored by 3.5 over under of 54.5. Incidentally, based on what the teams did this year, the over under should have been about fifty six if you if you want to look at it that way. Anyway, amazing that makes for a prediction. That. It's amazing. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen them off uh, eight or nine points in some games. Uh, so I, I think they look obviously at who is playing and who's not. But uh, the predicted final based on the line and the over under is Alabama twenty nine, Kansas State twenty six. Blaine, I would be completely lying to you if if I had any really good feel on what is coming, not just the opt-outs. It's the the look back to Alabama's not in this spot a lot, but I remember that Utah game a few years ago where it got its clock clean. Kansas State's got a lot to play for. Um, statistically, you know, not not sometimes you get a team that wins a lot of games, but it's not impressive, impressive statistically. That's not the, the case for Kansas State at all. Uh, played a tough schedule. Really good defense, um, you know, big, big advantage in turnovers, too, for Kansas State. Uh, that That's something we don't often talk about a lot, but that turnover margin, pretty different. Uh, do you have a gut feeling of what to expect on this game? And, and again, a lot of that is going to depend on who plays or does not play for Alabama, and we will do some live streams, I'm sure, between now and the bowl game where we may update that and therefore update our picks, but doing it here and now, uh, let's give it our best go. Yeah, my gut says that, uh, of course, all the all the motivation, all the momentum and everything is is uh, with, with Kansas State right now. But my brain says, hold on, Nick Saban is the greatest football coach to ever live, and uh, we're going to – say that he's just not going to get his team prepared to play after already having a previous example to, uh, in, in history mm-hmm. to go back and point to, I say, no, no, uh, I'm going to go with the, the Crimson Tide. Uh, one reason is, is the lack of, uh, you know, a stellar run defense for Kansas State. I think especially if it's Jalen Milrow who's playing, that yeah. Alabama is going to be able to do some creative things in the run game. And you still have Jameer Gibbs and Jace McClellan, who I think you could – argue that Jameer Gibbs was Alabama's MVP this year anyways. Um, they'll still have their top two receivers that they can take shots with from time to time. Cameron Latou should be able to, to to play as well. Now, the offensive line play will be a little bit of an issue, but I don't think that Kansas State is elite enough defensively just to stop Alabama's run game altogether, even with the shakeup with Cohen at offensive line. I wouldn't – I wouldn't dare go anywhere near this spread. I don't know. I think it could be a one point, you know, last second field goal, uh, you know, to take the lead type game. Uh, but give me, give me Alabama to win the Sugar Bowl. I think you're going to see the pride of the Crimson Tide come out in this one. Yeah, I'm going to go with you, just for lack of a better idea. I mean, there's always that little voice in my head 
that, that says don't bet against Nick Saban. Again, we have seen this scenario before, but not a lot. And by the way, a quick correction. Alabama averages 6.2 yards per running play and 7.3 for passing play. So that offense a little better than we gave it credit for being. I'm going to go with Alabama. Uh, I say they find a way to win. I don't feel great about it. Uh, if you do, God bless you, uh, because picking these bowl games in these circumstances and in this era, it's just brutally tough. Anyway, thank you for watching us. We are previewing every single bowl game involving SEC teams. I'm Chris Lee. He is Blaine Gilmer. We are Southeastern 14. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you again soon.